Hi everyone, I'm Dan from Dan Aesthetics at 3rd Avenue Spa. Did you know that today there are seven different technologies out there for HA fillers? Which means there are even more brands. I mean, each technology is unique and exceptional in its own way, but as a provider, it's almost impossible for us to stay up to date and memorize all these technologies. If only there was an easier way to memorize the essential components. That's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to break down three essential components that are applicable to all seven technologies. And I'm going to do it in a visual way for you to memorize. Once you have this down, you're on your way to becoming a confident injector. Let's take a peek at this sponge over here holding water. This is essentially everything you need to know with regards to filler. It has all three components that we are looking for. The first is elasticity, which represents the actual sponge itself. That sponge is going to respond to deformation. So if I'm going to push on it, is it going to stay flat when I let go? Does it bounce back partially or does it bounce back fully? And that is all considering the amount of BDDE bond. The more BDDE bonds there are, the firmer the sponge. All right, next is the viscosity, which represents the water in our sponge. Now imagine replacing our water with something such as honey or syrup or even molasses. Why does one flow so much slower compared to the other one? Well, that usually is caused by two factors. One is the tightness of particles. If it's very tight, then it's going to move much slower. The other factor is how large the particles are. Smaller particles usually tend to move a little quicker than larger particles. Viscoelasticity is the ability to take a plastic component and a viscous component, make them into one, and there you go. You have a proper hyaluronic acid gel. But before you inject, whatever brand you choose, you should be aware of the last component, and that is the hydrophilicity, or its ability to absorb and retain water. Now, I'm not gonna get too scientific with regards to hydrophilicity, but I want you to be aware that every brand has a different hydrophilic property. Some brands retain minimal water, and others retain six times its weight in water, and you need to be aware of that before injecting. I mean, imagine, you injected a temple, it looks great when you're done, and then two weeks later, their temple's all the way out to here, and they said they've had blistering headaches ever since. That can get you into potentially some big trouble here, so I just want to avoid that, and I want you to be aware of these three essential properties. Get these down under your belt, and you're good to go. Let's take a look at this at a microscopic level. On a superficial plane, you don't need much lift, so let's go with a low G prime. The cells in this location are very small and tightly bounded by the extracellular matrix. So ideally we need some product with a very low viscosity and small particle size to prevent the visibility of bumps. Now when injecting into the deep fat, we want something strong enough to lift the supporting structures above. So we're going to look for a high G' product. Now these fat cells are large and the matrix is loosely bounded. So ideally we need something with tight particles and large particles if possible. Now that you have the information, let's put it in real life. You want to restore someone's jawline. What type of fill are you going to use? Well, the elasticity. Do you want something like a loofah or do you want something like that cellulose sponge? I want the cellulose sponge. I want something that's going to have a good resistance to that deformation. Next, viscosity. Do I want something free flowing like water or do I want something stiff like molasses? I want the molasses. So I want something that's going to be tightly wounded with its particles and ideally a large particle size as well. And then finally, hydrophilic properties. That really depends on you. You need to be fully aware of the hydrophilic properties of your brand of product before going in. But if it's very hydrophilic, I do recommend giving about a 70% improvement and then reevaluating in about uh, two to three weeks. Otherwise, if it's low hydrophilic properties, you can give it about 90, 95%. So that's it for me. Thanks so much for tuning in. Now that businesses are opening back up, I'm gonna start posting these videos more often again. So until the next time, take care of yourselves, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Take care.